Okay, so just wanted to do a quick reaction video here and just kind of talk talk off top about last night's main event and co-main event with John Jones and Gone and Shevchenko and Grasso. Both some really interesting fights for different reasons. Um, the Gone fight def definitely didn't go the way I thought it would. That was very interesting, but I'm going to have another video coming out here uh, right after this one, breaking down how John won that fight and some of the technical details of that fight because it was really interesting. It was a very short fight. But there are a lot of details to talk about in that fight on how he completely shut down a mobile counter striker, a mobile agile heavyweight in Cyril Gone, and just took away all of his options. You know, in the last video, the preview, I, I was wondering, you know, would John prioritize his wrestling? And I was kind of leaning towards no because we haven't seen him do it in so long. But in this fight, he did. He did. As soon as there was an opening, he used that wrestling. And when John uses his wrestling like that, when he puts it at the forefront, He's just so hard to beat. He's hard to beat to the point where I don't I don't know if there's anybody at light heavyweight or heavyweight that can actually do it because you know, he out wrestled DC. If you out wrestled DC at light heavyweight or heavyweight, who who can out grapple you? <laughs> you know, it's and it's not even just the wrestling too. It's his submission grappling. His jiu-jitsu is so good and he he's such a thinking fighter in the grappling aspect especially. His fight IQ is great everywhere, but when John grapples, man, it is a thing of beauty. And if you're a fan of grappling like me, you know, no matter what you think of John, his his in cage performance and his grappling ability is just a thing of beauty, and it always has been. I've been a little iffy on his striking recently, uh, you know, because he had those close fights with Reyes and Santos, and then the Anthony Smith fight was just uh, not super thrilling <laughs> compared to his early fights. But his grappling has always just remained top notch. He is he has a really fast shot too. He's a really explosive shot. Um, he did have some trouble taking down Reyes, but. You know this version of John that we saw last night. It's there's something to be said for him being a really far ahead of Gone in the technique department. He's obviously light years ahead of Gone because Gone was also a guy who started MMA and martial arts in general later in life. So his chances of catching John in the grappling is basically zero, aside from being you know an ultra freak who could close that gap. You know an athletic freak who could close that gap, which is possible. It's just not likely. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet on it. I wouldn't really bet on anybody that would grapple Jones in, in either weight class. Yeah, overall, Jones just did a really good job of taking away Gon's weapons and every facet of the game and putting forward his best strength, or at least in my opinion, his best strength, and implementing it to you know to the tenth degree and just making Gon look silly in a lot of ways. And uh, I'm, I'm going to mention this in the next video too. But I, you know, I saw some tweets. I saw some people commenting, and I think it was even Teddy Atlas on the broadcast on one of those tweets that pops up on the side was saying that you know Gon just wasn't mentally strong enough at the end of the day or couldn't ha couldn't hang. And I'm like, that's just not that's not an accurate assessment though. This wasn't a, this wasn't a thing about mental toughness. This is John's technique versus Gon's technique. You know, at the at the most elite level like this, it's not like Gon just folded mentally. He got out techniqued. He got outskilled. He got outmaneuvered <laughs> in every aspect of the game. By saying it's a mental weakness of Gons, you're discrediting him as a fighter, but you're also discrediting Jones's skill. Like Jones is flat out outskilled him, and you'll and you'll see you'll see that in the next video when I pointed out what he did. But to Cliff note it, it was just you know he pressured him on the feet. He cut off the cage. He never let Gon settle. He never let him get into a groove. He was never able to get to a point where he could comfortably strike and dart out and move around like he likes to. Jones took all of that away with pressure and footwork. And then once he took him to the ground, he completely disabled Gone. He hooked his leg effectively so he couldn't move or scramble. He had that uh, that grip around the waist to control his body. He was, had wrist control, he had elbow control. There was a lot of things that went into it. But overall, my point is that Jones' technique was simply superior. And I talked about this in the preview video as well, that Jones' grappling technique would likely be superior to guns and it very obviously was and the tap at the end came from a very painful variation of a guillotine and gone actually threw himself into that guillotine by accident not really realizing what he was doing he was trying to react the best way he could but when you have john jones basically mounted on you you know good luck it's it's tough to get out of there moving on to shevchenko and grasso this was a really gratifying fight for me <laughs> because I think I'm like one of the few people on the planet who's really watched Grasso since her Invicta days. I've been a, I've been a big fan of her since she fought in Invicta. I always thought that she was a lot of fun to watch back then and that she had a lot of potential. And I personally expected her to become champion at 115 in the UFC when she came over. I thought she would do really well in the division. 
but she underperformed in the UFC in general relative to what I expected her ceiling and potential to be. I believe that she was always better than what she showed in the UFC, and I was always waiting for her to show performances more like the Invicta days. Now, of course, the caveat there is that when you come to the UFC, it's higher competition than it is Invicta. But at the same time, I thought her ability and her skill was there. It was just about putting it together. And before this fight, I posted in a discussion online that people were underestimating Grasso's submission game. She has very quick submissions. And even more than that, she has very quick transitions. She jumps on things very quickly. Shoots it for that single leg, gets it. And again, Grasso just constantly going for something. Very comfortable with launching off submission attempt after submission attempt. So smart to do. So smart to, to take the aggression, to train, to hit the ground. And she's got it. Uh, there's even footage of Grasso and Jiu Jitsu tournaments uh, from years ago, like 2016, 17, right around that, right around that time. So where you could see her compete, and she would go from like closed guard to sweeping someone into an armbar really quickly. Like she was, she's always been very fast at thinking steps ahead in the grappling. And again, that was something that I've been waiting for her to really show in the UFC because every one of her fights, I'm like, man, Grasso is better than what she showed in this fight. Her boxing is better than what she's shown in certain fights. She's had flashes of greatness here and there, but in general, coming into this fight, everyone was like, Grasso's gonna get crushed. This is a squash match. You know, they would post like low lights of her, you know, showing moments where maybe she missed a bunch of punches or looked slow, or, you know, there was, there was people mocking her and I'm like, man, it's just, it's tough to watch this because I feel like Grasso is better than that. Like she's just better than that. And she, and in this fight right away, she came out with the boxing and she showed good hands. She was tagging Valentina. She was doing better in the boxing and beating Valentina to the punch. And she was stringing together some good, some good combinations. Now, if Grasso has a weakness, it would be in the wrestling. And she got taken down by Valentina a few times. But what was interesting about the end of this fight is that it was similar to the end of the Gon Jones fight. Gone overextended with a punch and that got him taken and got his back taken on the ground or at least it had Jones behind him it didn't he didn't fully have his back taken with hooks in and all that but he got behind gone and in this fight with Shevchenko and Grasso Shevchenko overextended trying to throw a spinning back kick and that got her back taken and Grasso just hopped on it right away boom both hooks in and the way she sunk in the choke was really impressive too. She she had that choke and she had this gable grip at first, similar to the grip that we've seen like Anderson Silva use on Dan Henderson when he finished him. And this can be a really strong choking grip, but she, she was smart enough and she had a high enough fight IQ, grappling IQ to go from this to this and to switch to that stronger grip because she was still over Shevchenko's chin a little bit if you watch it. It wasn't completely underneath the chin. So by choking here over the chin, yeah, you could crush somebody's chin if you're strong enough into, you know, you could make them tap through pain that way, but it's, it's just not as strong as a grip as getting to the bicep and getting the hand behind the head and being able to really crunch down and squeeze with the whole torso. So when she really didn't blow out her arms with this grip and started to switch to this, I was like, oh man, this is this is getting real deep now. Even though it's over the chin, you can still finish it like that. And you know, sure enough, she showed that. So it was really gratifying in a way to see Grasso, as a longtime fan of hers, it really gratifying to see her win gold and to beat someone as dominant as Valentina. And I'm a big Valentina fan too. I like watching Valentina. I think she's been brilliant in a lot of her fights or you know, the vast majority of her career. I think she's very technically skilled. She's very strong. Her physical strength always impresses me. Even at bantamweight, she was overpowering Holly Holm and all these uh, fighters that were bigger than her and just throwing people around. She's just super, super strong. But to see Grasso jump on that opportunity and seize the opportunity and also show flashes of how good her boxing can be was just, again, really, really gratifying, really satisfying as a longtime Grasso fan. Uh, yeah, I think I think people should have given her more of a chance there, especially in these women's divisions. You know, with the women, with women's MMA, it can be very volatile. Just because you have someone who's dominant doesn't mean they're always going to be dominant. It, all it takes is that split second in time it's for, for them to f make a mistake and for the opponent to capitalize and win. And that's MMA in general. But you know, women's MMA, it, I think it's it's easier to get these visions of one fighter being ultra dominant like ronda like valentina like amanda and thinking oh they're never gonna lose you know those three fighters alone we've come to a point with all three of them to where when they fight people go oh 
well, you know, Ronda's just going to smash them or Nunez is just going to knock her out or Valentina is just going to crush, you know, and it's just, you know, it's easy to get into this mindset of these, these dominant female fighters are unbeatable, but they still have chinks in their armor. Juliana Pena, you know, capitalized on Nunez, Holly Holm knocked out Ronda and now Grasso took out Shevchenko. And the reason I thought Grasso had even more of a chance in this fight is just the way that Shevchenko looked last time with Santos. There were holes in her game there in the grappling to where someone with a good submission game or a good takedown and control game could potentially leverage that. And I think another person who potentially could as well is Erin Blanchfield. Blanchfield is looking real dangerous. She's looking real scary. She looks real talented. And I'm interested to see what happens with her as well. I think she will also be a champion here one day. I don't know if it'll be soon. I don't know if it'll be down the road, but I think that she holds gold at some point as well. But yeah, great to see Grasso get gold. Crazy performance by Jones. Really dominant. Good to see him use his grappling like he does. And I hope he continues to use it because I think he's pretty much unbeatable if he does put his grappling at the forefront like that. Just incredible fight IQ, incredible grappling in general. And yeah, so let me know what you guys thought of this event and your reaction to these fights down in the comments below. And make sure to check out the next video I do with the breakdown of Jones and Gone. And I will see you in the next one.